Spain's Supreme Court has denied the jail Catalan MP Jordi Sanchez to be sworn in as president. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. The Spanish judge has rejected today the request for Sanchez to attend the parliamentary session where he was to be sworn in as head of the government next Monday. The reason? The magistrate thinks there is a risk of a repeated offence and Sanchez's commitment to respecting legality is unclear. The plenary session is still set for Monday, but what will be the pro-independence party's reaction? So far, Sanchez's defence has announced that they will take the case to the European Court of Human Rights. We'll also bring you closer to Catalonia's least known airport, which had some good news today. The future of the Catalan presidency remains uncertain. Carlos Puigdemont withdrew his bid for the post last week after Spain's fierce opposition against him. He named Jordi Sanchez, who is in jail, as his successor. But this bid also looks unpromising after the Spanish Supreme Court decided today to deny him permission to attend the Catalan chamber on Monday when he's due to be sworn in. The reasons behind the decision mix the judiciary and political fields in the country even more. Jordi Sanchez will not be sworn in as Catalan president on Monday. The pro-independence activist will remain imprisoned in the Soto de Real prison in Madrid, where he's been for almost five months. Spain's Supreme Court today rejected his request for temporary permission to leave jail and attend the chamber. Sanchez faces criminal charges for his role in the independence bid, especially as the alleged instigator of demonstrations in the run-up to the October 1st referendum. In justifying his decision, the judge says that there are still parties pushing for immediate independence in defiance of Spanish law. The Spanish government is clear that someone in prison should not be sworn in as the head of a government. El gobierno cree que una persona que está en prisión provisional eh, no está en situación de eh, ejercer unas funciones que exigen, eh, como las que exige eh, el ser presidente de Cataluña. Sánchez had the support of the two main pro-independence parties in Catalonia. Indeed, Carlos Puigdemont put him forward as his successor after giving up on his efforts to reclaim the presidency. The election was expected to put an end to the current political stalemate in Catalonia, with the formation of a government after months of direct rule from Madrid. The pro-independence parties now have to decide what to do next. Sanchez's defence team will take the judge's decision to the European Court of Human Rights on Monday. The question is whether the pro-independence parties can wait until a decision is made to reinstate the Catalan government. It's clear that the events last autumn are still having an impact on Catalan politics. But the investigation led by the Spanish Attorney General into the referendum continues, so even more people could be charged. Two mayors who are MPs in the Catalan Parliament have received letters from the Spanish Attorney General asking about their role ahead of the October 1st independence vote. They are being questioned whether they allowed local premises to be used as polling stations, even after being warned that it was illegal. Some days before the referendum, the prosecutor opened an investigation into over 700 mayors out of the 950 in the country for their role in the run-up to the vote. One of them is Marc Sosona, the mayor of Moyarusa in the western part of the country. Un cop el poder polític deriva en el poder judicial, allò que no soc capaç de resoldre políticament és quan la maquinària judicial continua els seus passos al seu camí eh, per intentar, doncs això, doncs, eh, segons ells fer justícia, segons uns altres, doncs intentar torpedinar lo que seria la voluntat popular. Catalonia's three main airports are thriving with significant increases in passenger numbers last year. The Barcelona, Girona and Reus infrastructures are on the rise, with the smaller Lleida airport receiving travellers from a Swedish tour operator for the first time this winter season. But there is another, even smaller airport owned by the Catalan administration in the far north of the country. Although it hasn't got full permission for regular commercial flights yet, it has some good news today. In the north of Catalonia, close to the border with Andorra, a small airport has been in operations since 1982, and today, it inaugurated new commercial routes to Marseille, Palma and Madrid with 80% occupation. On the first day of operations, a total of 14 people, including 12 professionals, landed on Friday morning from the French city. The plan is to run commercial flights to and from the airport with more regularity in the future. Des d'aquest punt de vista estem contents perquè hi ha hagut gent d'aquí que ha fet el pas de demostrar que en aquest aeroport es pot volar, s'hi pot arribar i es pot conèixer un territori meravellós com aquest. Tinc un somni, un somni és veure arribar aquí un dia un avió de Londres, que aquest és el, un dels nostres mercats tradicionals, i atansar Londres a dos hores de la neu a Andorra i el Pirineu és molt important. 23 people flew to Palma in Mallorca, while 22 flew to Madrid. 
The return flight to Marseille, operated by Twinjet, a sister company of Air France, had 13 people on board. The flights were organized by the company Viaggias Regina. The airport is not a typical airport, mostly hosting general aviation flights until now. It was close to commercial flights in 1984 and was used solely by private planes until 2008. The Catalan government bought it and got to work redeveloping it and reopening it to commercial flights once more. Its short runaway limits the size of aircraft and destination distances. However, the airport hopes for this to change in the future. Moving on to economy now, but still with an eye on the political situation, the Catalan Association of Economists has called for the end of Spanish direct rule in Catalonia. In a press conference held today, the organization has warned that the taking over of the country's self-rule is creating a rather unusual situation. The application of Article 155 of the Spanish Constitution, which enabled Spain to strip the country of its autonomy, has no justification in a minimally advanced society, an official stated. Although the outlook for 2018 is positive, specifically with regard to exports, Spain's ongoing in intervention in Catalan affairs is causing a slowdown of the economy's agility, particularly in the public sector. Rajoy's government implemented the article back in October last year after Catalonia declared independence. El sector públic competeix amb les mans lligades. I això és una situació que és completament extraordinària, anòmala, pot ser que no tingui molta conseqüència econòmica, però és disfuncional per definició. Esports fans have a new date to mark in their calendar, November 29th. This is when this year's edition of the Barcelona Games World Fair will kick off. Last year the event was held in October when gamers gathered at the Plaza España venue. This time the fair will move to where the Mobile World Congress took place recently. Barcelona Games World will offer new experiences for visitors, including mobile gaming. Esports competitions will also feature, like last year, high-power computer fans and vintage video games lovers will find their place between November 29th and December 2nd. Yesterday we told you about the historical Women's Day action speaking from the demonstration in Barcelona. With 200,000 people attending the march, it was the biggest ever feminist protest in the country. But the Catalan capital was not the only one hosting demonstrations yesterday. Before we go for now, we'll leave you with some images of a similar protest in three other major Catalan towns on the day dedicated to women. Girona, Tarragona and Lleida. Goodbye for now. Oh,